Welcome back to speaking, communicating, and writing in English in the creative world with me, Nicole. So today we're going to be talking about ways that you can absorb English in daily life without too much of an effort, without taking an intensive course, and without changing your daily habits too much. Because I don't know about you, but not many of us have time just to dedicate five hours a day to learning a new language. So I've collected some tips and um, some methods that you can incorporate English in your daily life, doing things that you enjoy and are fun to do. So the four basic language skills you need when learning a new language are reading, writing, listening, and speaking. Did you know that there's ways you can learn a new language even by going to the supermarket or going for a run or simply having something on in the background? Crazy. So, for people that like reading, books. Books are a great way to learn English. So, to improve your listening skills, try listening to an audiobook. And I'm going to um, list some sources in the captions below. An effective trick is to listen to an audiobook of a book you've already read in your native language. That way you're already familiar with the plot and you can really focus more. So when it comes to writing for books, um, one thing you can do is write down words you don't know. And don't be lazy, look them up. Like, don't just write them down and then leave them there. Look them up, write the definition, and there you go, you've already learned a new word. If you want to take it a step even further, you can try to summarize um, after every chapter and write down the summary in your notebook, and this way you practice um, your writing skills. Agree on a book that you both want to read. After maybe you've read a chapter together, why not try to discuss it in English? And you could lead this discussion with questions like, what did you like about it? Um, what do you not like? Um, who's your favorite character? Who do you relate to more? You know, make fun predictions together, like, uh, what do you think will happen next? Um, you know, make it fun and interesting. If you want to take it a step even further, <laughs> start a book club with your friends. And in that book club, make sure there's someone who has a decent level of understanding of English, and they don't necessarily have to be a mother tongue. For those of you that like listening to music or the radio, why not try that in English? Um, there are a ton of online radio stations, and there's a ton of music in English. Um, and I've also included a bunch of sources regarding that in the caption. Okay, so if you want to improve your writing skills regarding music and the radio, um, I'm gonna say it again. In that notebook, write down vocabulary words you don't know and look them up. Write down your favorite phrases from songs you like. Um, it can also become a kind of cool creative project. Okay, so for speaking. Um, so this is for the daring and the bold. Uh, if you like to sing, or if you like to, like me, you like to embarrass yourself and sing, um, why not try doing karaoke? So what you have to do is look up the instrumental version of one of your favorite songs in English. You can do that on YouTube. And then on Google, search the lyrics. And you can try and host your own karaoke. <laughs> but if you don't want to do that alone, which might be a bit weird, <laughs> um, and only I do things like that, um, do that with a group of people. Do a, host a virtual Zoom karaoke night where you all choose your favorite song and um, do those same steps and try to do it all together. So this is for the reading part. You know when you listen to a song and you think to yourself, what the hell did they just say? Um, so look up that phrase, look up the lyrics. Like I said, you can find every single um, lyrics to every song on the internet and you can read them. Another way to practice English is through the news. There are a ton of online news sources, which I will put in the caption below. Try to summarize the news article. So try to rewrite it in your own words, and it's okay if that's few, and write it as if you're sharing it with someone who's never read that article before. You can try the five W's. 
So that's the who, the what, the when, the where, and the why. And those are the five W's that every journalist use when they're writing a news story. So why not try to do that yourself? Talk about it, exchange opinions, um, exchange your thoughts. And for reading, there's a ton of online news sites. Um, I'll also include that in the caption below. Read the articles, and I suggest that try reading an article of something you already know about, or something you know that already happened. And that way you're already informed on the details, but you can focus more on the vocabulary. Okay, my all-time favorite way to learn a new language is through podcasts. I mean, not only do I love podcasts in general, but this is a great way to hear a combination of colloquial and academic English. And there are so many genres and types of podcasts out there that you have such a wide selection to choose from. If you want to try a writing exercise with podcasts, um, and maybe you can do this with a friend too, after you've both listened to it, um, try answering these questions. Um, you know, what did you like about the podcast? Um, what was your favorite part? Um, do you have a favorite line? Um, do you agree with them? Do you disagree with them? Um, you know, who do you relate the most to? Speaking about our opinion in a new language isn't easy, but it's always better to start from something that you know and that you feel passionate about. Okay, so for reading with podcasts, let's say you're listening to a podcast and you hear a reference or you hear a name and you have no idea who this person is or what that thing is. Look it up. Look it up. <laughs> if you want to watch a TV show or a movie in English, I suggest you either uh, put the subtitles in your native language and you listen to it in English or listen to it in your native language with the subtitles in English or if you feel comfortable enough watch it both uh, in English and the subtitles in English these three methods are for you to choose from and you have to see what feels best for you and what is most comfortable for you and you know just because you have to keep the subtitles on in your language or you can't um, hear it in English yet, don't be discouraged because you can get there. Write down words you don't know, write down phrases you don't know. Um, keeping a notebook and collecting all this information is really helpful instead of just letting it go who knows where. YouTube tutorials are great to learn English because not only are you improving uh, your, a new language, but you're also maybe learning a new skill. So there's pretty much a video on how to do everything on YouTube. So think about what it is that you need help with, a skill you want to learn, you need to fix something. YouTube has the answers and you can listen to it in English. For speaking, um, this might seem a little bit ridiculous, but you can try it out. Um, I'm, that's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> you can um, try to make your own YouTube tutorial in English. Okay, um, and by doing and to do this, you can think about a skill that you know really well, or something that you know how to do, and pretend like you're you have to teach it to an audience. If you know how to work some kind of computer program, if you know how to tie a bow, if you know how to fly a kite, um, these are terrible examples, but you know what I mean. If you're watching a YouTube tutorial and you don't know what that person is saying, you can always look in the caption because sometimes people put the script of, of their YouTube video. Um, and if, let's say it's about um, how to play guitar or how to ride a bike or, I don't know, how to make a cheesecake, um, these are all things you can look up on Google and you can also see descriptions online. Here's another fun one, horoscopes. Um, for people that like to read their horoscope, why not try doing it in English, okay? Um, there are a bunch of horoscope readings on YouTube, which I will put um, in the caption below. Um, and as you know, there are a bunch of websites where you can read your horoscope, and I will also put those in the captions below. Here are some other ways you can include English. So this might sound crazy, but talk to yourselves, people. Like, you can do that, okay? If you don't have a tandem, you don't have a friend, or you're just embarrassed to speak a new language, try to do it on your own. It might sound silly, but ask yourself, like, hmm, how was your day? Um, what did you eat today? 
Um, how do you feel? And answer those questions for yourself. And this is for people that like to talk out loud when they're doing things. For example, when you're cooking or when you have some tasks that you have to do during the day. Try saying those things in English like, hmm, now I have to go to the supermarket. Then I have to cook. Then I think I'm going to go for a walk. You know, try that. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening. I had a great time. I hope this was useful to you. Um, like I said, learning English doesn't have to be boring. It can actually be really fun. So try some of these ways out. Remember, I'm going to be hosting a Q&A question and answer next, in the next video. So please, people, send me your questions, send me your doubts, anything you want to know. I'm really happy to answer. All right.